One day the Prophet وسلم, stood up in the depths of the night. It is authentically reported in Al-Bukhari that he raised his hands up to the heavens and he said, Oh Allah, my Ummah, my Ummah. Ya Allah, my Ummah, my Ummah. Ya Allah, my Ummah, my Ummah. He couldn't say more than that. He couldn't finish his sentences because he was so emotional. Until the night passed and the last third of the night came. Until Fajr time came. And at that point, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam came down and said, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Allah has sent me and said, Ya Muhammad, your Lord will not disappoint you regarding your ummah. Your Lord will not disappoint you regarding your ummah. The question is, brothers and sisters of Islam, are we going to disappoint our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Are we going to disappoint our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Allah has promised our Prophet, He will not disappoint him regarding our Ummah. The question is us, are we going to otherwise not fulfill the promise of Allah and be a disappointment for our Prophet For those people who are looking at the situation, the Muslimin around us and say there is no hope for this Ummah. This Ummah is destroyed. There is no hope for it. Those who look at the situation of Islam and Muslims and the countries of, the, of Islam and Muslims being eaten up by other people, but Allah, I will tell you, every single person that has made an effect in this dunya was not a really great man before they became, became great. They were not particularly talented, not particularly educated, not particularly eloquent. They didn't need the permission of everybody. They didn't have the help of everyone as well. But Allah, they had one thing and one thing only, and that was a deep burning desire to achieve something. Be you of those people who fulfill His vision. Be you of those people who fulfill your love for Allah by pursuing the vision of Rasulullah on this earth. Everyone will say, I love Allah or I want to love Allah. However, certain things prevent them from proving their love for Allah. The first thing that prevents them is this negativity. I can't be that great. I can't prove my love to Allah. I've done too much sins. I'm not someone special. I don't have Islamic knowledge. I only know so little. I'm not from a great family. I'm not a great speaker. How can I truly do so many things? How can I prove my actions? How can I increase my actions in order to prove my love to Allah Azawajal? I'm no one special. But by Allah, you are special. You are special. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when a slave stands in his salat and he says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah answers the slave back and says, my slave had, has praised me. So every time you speak to Allah, Allah speaks to you back. You are not a person in six billion. You are the person in six billion at that moment. Because Allah, Rabbul Izzati Wal Jalal, despite looking after the affairs of creation has time for you. Oh my brothers, my sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pays attention to you. So my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, do not be of those people who are negative about your love for Allah Azawajal. Be of those people who are positive about it. Every single time you feel negative, every single th time you feel you can't prove your love to Allah Azawajal, every single time you think of doing something to show Allah Azawajal, Ya Rabb, you are more important to me than the whole of this dunya, Ya Allah. Every single time you feel like this, remember by Allah, the Prophet was a very positive person. Be very positive about yourself. Be very positive that you can make a change. Be very positive that you will have an effect in changing the Ummah. My brothers and my sisters in Islam, how much does Allah love us? It's shown by the fact that even when we disobey Him, He still feeds us, He still clothes us, He still lets us breathe by Allah. He still provides for us and nourishes us and sustains us. Even whilst we're disobeying Him by Allah, even when we're committing that sin, Allah is still letting us breathe. Allah is still letting us eat our food. Ya Salam. How great and how noble and how merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, it is because of this that one of His most beautiful names Allah has revealed to us, told us about from the 99 names that we should memorize to go to Jannah. One of the names is Al-Wadud. Do you know what Al-Wadud means? He is the loving God. Al-Wadud, the one who loves, the one who has mercy with his creation, the one who loves to love his creation, the one who loves his creation so much so 
that the love that he has sent on this earth is only one part of 99 parts that he has prepared for the believers in the day of judgment. So my brothers and my sisters in Islam, what have you done to prove to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you love him? What is it that you have done to prove to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you love him? What actions can you identify with that you have done to prove to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he asks you on the day of judgment? Ya abdi, ya abdi, O oh my slave, how have you proven that you love me so that I may love you back on this day? My slave, what have you done to prove that you love me? My brothers and my sisters in Islam, by Allah, there is not a single person, the one who is speaking and the one being spoken to, except that he will find a level of hypocrisy in his heart in this question by Allah. Indeed, the Prophet wasallam said in the authentic hadith, Man ahabba liqa Allah, ahabba Allahu liqa'ah, wa man kariha liqa Allah, kariha Allahu liqa'ah. Whoever loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. And whoever hates to meet Allah, Allah hates to meet him. Ask yourself, are you from those people? Rabbuna, Rabbul Qulubi, wa huwa